welcome to today's video. I'm Andrew and Terry. Welcome to CHP TV for your latest <laughs> inspiration, motivation podcast. Mm -hmm. Yes. Today. Yes, today. So look, we are we moved away from last uh, time's episode of the secret of the hustle, and today we are moving to quitting. So basically, this is something that we wanted to talk about of you know quitting while you're ahead, and basically why is quitting a great thing. So let's get straight into it and. To basically to begin something um, you know like this uh, this episode, especially for this topic, we wanted to basically differentiate a couple of things, especially the difference between um, society's way of actually trying to understand quitting and basically the strength and the confidence and the courage of quitting from uh, a human being perspective. But I want to basically um, before we get into that, basically, I want to ask you, Andrew, especially. Um, you know, quitting for the greater good, right? Because before I get into, you know, the two definitions, I want to get your take on this. And basically, because again, I'll say the same thing. No, you no, know, no. What's your perspective yeah. of quitting while you're ahead? And well, the why thing, should we be doing this? Yeah, well, the thing is, I was going to ask you that, especially because knowing that, you know, people, um, there, there are a lot of articles like this, and sometimes it does get taken in a negative way, especially, you know, quitting is a great thing. How has this, you know, come to be? So I want to ask you, you know, quitting for a greater good. From your perspective, why do you think it's actually good for the individual? Maybe even better for the human race? Or why we should just give up and quit? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just stop what you're just doing stop now. Stop doing this, quit. Um, no, I think, look, it's a, it's a great question. I think most people need to, to, to really understand it because sometimes, see, why, what it means to me, more in my perspective and my belief and in that light, mm. it's quite simple. Um, Sometimes we overload ourselves on too much, too much yep. stuff, and I think yep. while we're going towards a better place, like you've made the decision to find a new job, yeah, right? of course. Sometimes that job's not going to actually serve you as much as you think it is. Sometimes mm. you're quitting because of something else, That's you know. True. And we're going to go through that in detail. Yeah. But we, for me, quitting while you're ahead on certain things, yeah, whether that be um, bad relationships, yeah you know health issues and whatever it is it's basically saying you know what i'm not going to do this anymore yeah to myself of course of course and basically it is it comes from a level of self-respect for yourself and you yeah. I mean, in a way because i don't know if you might believe about you know being selfish and all that sort of stuff i know there is a difference between good and bad selfish you know good selfish is always putting yourself first but a bad selfish is when you think of yourself too much mm. but if you know this is something that isn't serving you like you said before and you're quitting or something you're eventually inviting something new to your life yeah, and yeah. you and you know what you're releasing something that's taking up most of your life or taking something up in mm. your life and that's um, something that's very important and even in saying that mm. what does it mean to you though like well, what do you well, think well the thing is? is well the thing is this is why I wanted to talk about especially for this first topic you know the difference between quitting and quitting so what I want to actually state right now is that you know giving up and quitting you know, aren't, aren't necessarily not the same thing. They're, they're not even that close. Yeah. So from society's perspective and from what I've read up about it, basically, you know, as society, we are conditioned, um, you know, to think that uh, quitting is uh, failing, right? Yeah. We don't, we don't yeah. think of failure as actually learning from something and becoming wiser. We have been conditioned as a society to see if someone has quit, they had failed. So basically, oh, yeah. yep, yep. you know, I, you know, I, and this is why we're doing this video because I want to argue, especially this is the complete opposite of why we actually, um, you know, we want to give you the right meaning towards this. You know, when you quit something, you know, in a, in a more of a considered way, and I've written notes here, it shows you have a value for your own time, purpose and worth, and you've made a decision to the betterment of those things. So largely because of the way we view or mistake quitting for giving up, it's even harder, it's even a harder thing to do because we are almost taking into account what other people think. Mm. So we look at the external resources and we think that if we quit on something, we will look be looked in a negative way. I don't know if you've ever experienced it, but again, yeah, if, yeah. I think uh, it's it's a, it's that it's, it's a, that pr pressure from society expectations, and I think you're right, and that's what I was gonna say to you, mm. like um People do think, you know, mm. quitting is failing, and people make the mistake that failure, you know, I think it comes from, you know, school time, you know, you get, mm. you get an A, and well, then you, if you don't get an A, yep. You're, you're the worst. You're, 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 you're the, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? No, so, I think it looks schools, that look, at schools, also. No, I, no, I agree with that 100% because schools do have that expectation for their students. They want the best for them, but unfortunately, I find that with students, uh, particularly I think I don't know if you ever went through it where oh, you yeah, failed a lot and all that sort of stuff but you know when 
you know, acquit on certain things. You know, you were looked as like the black sheep, uh, um, black sheep. Sorry, and but black sleep, the black sleep. So, um, basically, from that, you know, uh, it, it, this is the problem with a lot of people this day. And this is why society has deemed quitting to be a very bad thing. But what I found is that from more of a positive statement, quitting what uh, when it's right takes a lot of courage for the individual. So, in contrast, you know, what's the difference? You know. Um, all it is is that the decision that something isn't worth continuing so worth being the you know operative word in the sentence you know this is where the sunk cost fallacy comes in because despite investing time and energy into a project you are not getting value out of either, um, out of something in you know whatever you've ever hoped for mm. and sometimes it is better to quit and put that time into something else this is the difference between people who you know what society has deemed where you're not quitting on something because you don't want to be looked at as a bad person yeah but what are you doing for yourself at the end of the day you are trying to make yourself happy if you're not enjoying with what you are doing right and you're beating your head against the wall right there are times that you'll probably learn from it you know, you, have, you take the aspects, you take the learning curve from it and you go, you know what, I've got to move on from this. It is not serving me. And this is the proper way to quit because it does take courage, but also you le- you, you level up Yeah. if you think about it. Yeah. So again, so basically this is the difference between quitting and quitting, especially from, you know, Andrew's perspective on it and from what people see and what, you know, society sees. And to move on from that, you know, we move to the next phase, you know, on why is quitting a great thing. So basically we've differentiated between, you know, the good and the bad, but the thing is that what we have found is basically the next is basically quit on the mm. ego. Now, this is what I want to talk to you about. Is basically um, the voice of the ego, and this is something that I want to ask you on: why quitting the ego, and why is this a great thing, especially for the viewers, you know, watching this, especially for anyone, family, friends, mm. or anyone that we haven't met before. Why do you feel that they should quit on the ego? Okay, so the, uh, for me, there's two there's two types of e- ego. Yeah, there's the ego that serves you. Yep, and the ego that protects you protects yep. you yep. and you might think it's two of the same thing but it's not see the ego that serves you mm. is the one that can get you up in the morning yep. your walls against uh, your backs against the wall yep. and you've got something to fight for mm. the ego is needed in those moments of course. there's certain moments of a winning mentality mm. you know you're mm. down one nil in soccer in basketball you're down by 10 points with four minutes to go and it's a playoff game game seven whatever it is maybe you know you, you're meeting a deadline maybe mm. you've got a crowd in front of you and you've just realized you've mucked up the words and you're a speaker and you're like, oh my God. Mm. If you go into the ego of the version of, that protects you, mm. you're going you're gonna to fall victim. Mm. So you're saying that, so you're saying the one that protects you necessarily hurts you? It, the one that protects you is the one that hurts you. And, and the thing is, is guys, you've got to see it in, in the light of a positive thing. It's not a negative thing because the brain, the mind wants to, to protect serve you, to, to protect you. So wait, that, you know, that fire over there is going to hurt you. That's going to hurt you. This is going to hurt you. So you've got to understand and differentiate the differences between the ego that is actually worth it. The one that's mm. actually going to be there for you yep. when times are tough. You know, my mm. ego has helped me and I've got a big ego, mm. especially I've got so much belief. It's almost, um, Tom Bill, you said this, he's the owner of Quest uh, Nutrition or something like that. Um, mm. Billion dollar company. Um, mm. Really cool guy. And he said, it's almost like having the arrogance of belief. Yeah. I've heard An about, arrogant I've heard, belief. I've heard, yeah, I've heard about this. Yeah, right? So it's this. almost like, yeah, I know I'm going to win, but it's not like this arrogant way of, it's more this determination of this mentality of, mm. I'm going to get that thing that I want. I, that I have so much belief in myself mm. that it's arrogant in sometimes, but yep. in not the negative, negative. connotation yes. of arrogant. Yep. And, and we need to understand that mm. it's more the... You know, you, you, you want to build a business, yep. Yep. right? And you're scared to maybe go take yep. out a loan. You're mm. scared that, you know, the bills aren't going to be paid or anything like that. And that's when the ego of protection ca- kicks in, mm-hmm. you know, um, that's the one that's going to hurt you. Mm. But the one that is going to serve you and, mm. and really get you the results mm. are, uh, is the ego that's going to go, you know what, I'm going to go out on a, on a limb of faith right yeah, now. And yeah, and that's the thing, one thing was I was reading enough on this lady who actually had written um, Seven Ways. Her name is oh. Helen, Helen Rowe. And I found this article. I just wanted to talk to you guys about this. So basically she said a couple of steps, but in relating to the quitting of the ego, right, um, you know, she says here about, you know, it saves a lot of unnecessary pain, yeah. you know, it creates a space for the right fit and makes you more committed in the long run. But also it refocuses you and changes direction for yourself because sometimes we get yeah. led, you know, if you live by the ego, we do get led down the wrong direction. Well, yeah, and especially this, this if you problem. start making a bit of money and you think you're... 
you know, McGregor. Yeah, or Mayweather. Ma- Ma- Mayweather. Yeah, that's it. And they just start flinging money everywhere like it doesn't mean anything. And the thing is, and, 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 people and, are, you and, know, and, dying of starvation. And, 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 funny, like and is it funny with the ego, the protecting and serving? Yeah. What are you doing at the end of the day? When you get yeah. to that, this is why we always say, put on the ego. Sure. We, you know, we, we know that ego is uh, serving us in the right way. And what Andrew was saying is, you know, one that serves you and the one that, you know, protects you or hurts you. So when you get to that, that fame and fortune, whatever you are wanting to go for, isn't it funny? Is it, are you serving yourself in a way of getting this or are you still protecting yourself by having all this? Are you protecting something, but at the end, you know, you're probably going to hurt yourself because you know, in the big time is if you lose it, what's going to happen? You get lost in the process. Of course. Yeah. You know what that's, I'm saying? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, and this and this moves to especially, um, you know, for what I was talking about. You know, Wayne Dyer, I, I'm a big fan, and you know, I've read a lot of his work, especially uh, all the books he's written. Um, one thing he didn't mention about, especially quitting on the ego, he goes, "You got to quit on things that you know society has and society looks up to that makes a person." And an example of this is he goes, mm, "Interesting." So he he what he decided was, you know, quit the ego in a, in a you know in a way of you know what I have, my mm-hmm. achievements, and something that we're gonna move on to later on, which is you know quitting on the person that we are not. But the thing is, it's only about the achievements and also what we have, you know, what we have, the materialistic things, our toys and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Because he knows that if that's what serves you, in a way it comes to the point that you start getting very fearful that you might lose Well, yeah, this. it's the fear of loss, then it becomes- I've I, got everything, uh, yeah. Um, Scrooge, uh, what's that, the movie? What, the uh, Christmas Carol? You yeah, say? Christmas Carol. You remember Scrooge? He had to hold on to his treasures. He wouldn't pay people extra money. Mm. You know, that's what happens when you hold on. And to actually, that's money. a great example, especially with Scrooge, you know, especially for that movie, you know, Christmas Carol, because that shows an example of someone who is protecting a lot of their achievements, is protecting a lot of the things mm. they have. But at the end of the day, look what go. happened. It's like, what more do you want? It's like, yeah. you're doing this, but at the end of the day, you're, you're killing yourself internally. Of course, you know? and people do. We do kill ourselves internally when yeah. it comes to the ego. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, you know, when Wayne Dyer had told this story about there's people out there who thrive for $100,000 and all that sort of stuff, and yeah. they do everything, they screw people over, they, you know, all that sort of stuff, and they get there and they realize there's no enjoyment hmm. into it. And this is something that the ego has done very well in the worst possible way. As much as the ego, you know, can be seen in a positive, but people majority of the time see it as a negative. So, you know, I'm sure that you've had the examples or stories, especially in sports. I, mean, I know yeah, you're a big yeah. sports well, What like, I was gonna, in the contrary of asking you, is um, mm. has society created an ego for us? As in for seven billion people in the world. Yeah, I think there's 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 a stigma behind it. There's a stigma behind it because I, I personally think, especially when it comes to like making a hundred, when you said a hundred thousand yeah, dollars, yeah. I want to question this about yeah, it. Yeah. I want to say hundred thousand dollars isn't much these days. I know, I know, but that's that's the thing though because the reason I'm saying a hundred thousand dollars, it is. We yeah, still get told that we, we still get told we still, still get, we still get told that hundred thousand dollars money is a lot, but it depends on the individual. They can take it as a positive or take it as a negative. Mm. But at the end of the day, if we know their ego is serving them, right? Yeah. You know they're doing they're internal right there, they're yeah. doing internal damage to themselves, and this is the thing that why we say quit on the ego. We're saying that we know ego serves. But quit on the ego when the times that the ego is doing very stupid things where you're doing things that's going against your values, your morals, your attitudes, you know you want to change, but the ego you know, comes in and basically wants to take over that. It goes, no, 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 this is, the, this is what I think. Don't let, you know, um, don't come from a space of your ego, come from a space of your soul, your mind and your spirit. If yeah, you come in a space yeah, from your yeah. ego, it's one of those things that um, you know that you're gonna be led from this unstoppable force. And you'll get so deep into it that you realize, what the hell have I done? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I think yeah. it's also like the million dollar dream. A million dollars um, well, yeah. isn't much anymore. And really to be a millionaire in a business, I was uh, listening to a podcast and I think mm. it was Grant Cardone. I can't remember who mm. it was. Mm. And he said in front of the crowd, he says, oh, who, who, he's a millionaire. Uh, everyone's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah, he's yeah. like, who he thinks that, you know, that's a lot of money. Yeah. And he's like, <laughs> you guys are broke. Yeah. You know, and it was like, wait, what do you mean I'm broke? Mm-hmm. He's like, you are, okay. You yeah. you know, you drop it down, you got $100,000 mm-hmm. and you drop down expenses and assets and uh, all you that know, sort of stuff. You realize that, that, I realize you, you, you're not even worth that. You're broke. That. You're not even worth that. Because you're broke. You know, and so. this is why, you know, this is why, um, you know, this is very vital. And this brings us mm. to uh, the next point. Good point. Uh, and something I that like I wanted, that. To, the one that I wanted to talk to you about was basically, 
Well, we had here quitting on the procrastination, but we actually spread it out and actually said quitting the fear, failures, excuses, doubts, and challenges mm. and obstacles. Now, you're probably all thinking, how can we quit on failure? How can we quit on fear and stuff? Because it's part of us, which is very true. But what I wanted to um, talk about, because you mentioned it before this uh, this taping, mm. the perspective of it. Yeah. So basically, quitting on fear, failures, challenges, and obstacles, and excuses especially. So break it down for us. Basically, the shifting of the mind. So what are we necess- What are we really quitting on? We're not quitting on these things. What are we really quitting on? Quitting on ourselves. When when mm. we when we say quitting on the fear, the failure, uh, the mm. excuses, the doubts mm. that we have for ourselves, these are the things that actually make up on us. It's our makeup of yeah. who we are. Yeah. Because honestly, if you didn't go through a painful experience and saw mm. the light, you wouldn't have a positive outcome or yeah. experience. You wouldn't experience beauty a relationship health mm-hmm. like oh my god you know I had a lot of health problems because I couldn't stop eating mm-hmm. you know and now mm-hmm. you know I'm eating the right foods yep. and so forth mm-hmm. but the thing is is that people need to quit on these things you know I think also in a way oh, I know what you're trying to say but I just think I've got the whole light bulb idea of what you're saying but keep going keep going I like this I like this for, I, I think it's overrated you know because there is no such thing as fear there's only success mm-hmm. there's no such thing as failure just feedback mm-hmm. so all this is just an illusion the mm. mind has created. It's just obstacles. And what, and, and what are people with a low conscious aware, conscious level of awareness, what do they do to themselves so they can get con, you know consulted? What do they do? They victimize themselves. Yeah, they victimize themselves. Uh, they, they, they then... Uh, <laughs> that's what's, that's what's I don't know, just so many things have just popped in my head of everybody that's done it. Because as I was saying them, I'm like... To, like my, my mind actually like my brain mm. just had like um, a fart moment like, just, like, <laughs> just, like just brain so no I just started um, uh, uh, what's it called I just had a brain malfunction it was yeah. just and, and I was like twitching in my head and all the wires are just going everywhere and I was like Jesus Christ when you really think about it <laughs> I've just I can feel it right now it's all just illusion it's all bullshit it is yeah Part of my language, but it's all BS. It's all mm. load of BS. So, so you're saying with so you're saying quit on fear, failures, excuses, and doubts, and challenges. You're saying, let me get this straight: is that when you say it's an illusion, you're saying the learnings that for what we have been taught about these things. So you're saying quit on those, or what are you necessarily? What I'm saying, saying is, it's all an optical illusion because. Mm. Okay, say for example, you're uh, you're at school and you're doing a test. Mm. The only okay. thing that you have is time. Yeah. Now, time is something that you cannot shorten or long. No. You can't. No. It's, right? It's, it's, if, it's if, made to purpose is it, to tell you the time. It tells you the time. If there's uh, between 12 and 1 o'clock the test is, that means you've got between 12 and 1, that's an hour, you've got 60 minutes, yep. you know, yep. and X amount of seconds. Yep. So, for you to do overwhelm, for you to distort information and say, oh, far out, you know, the pressure... Mm. comes an obstacle in life whether it's confronting mm. someone and saying look I really like you you want to go on a date with me mm. or getting your resume together and saying you know what I'm going to go hand this in because this is what I'm worth mm-hmm. you know anytime someone has said no to you whatever you've done afterwards mm. the way you've responded mm-hmm. to it mm. is the learning mm. But the event itself is not the actual meaning. Mm. So fear, failure, doubts, they're all just words of illusion. They don't exist. Mm. Because if you turned around and said, I'm going to take responsibility for my life, Mm. then you realize Mm. that it's just learning. It's just education. Of course, it's it's just the road that you're on. Of course. But people make it a big deal because people would be like, you know, failure's part of success. And then it's like, yeah, failure's part of the success and I'm going to go out there and, and fail. fail. And it's like, no, happy, you just go out and try. You don't have to say it because words will create a neurological pathway. And this brings to the, and this brings to the quote, and you'll, you'll love this and you'll thank me for this. It's the last movie, Dark Knight Rises. When Batman has come out at eight years, his, his legs torn up. Yeah, he is. And then Alfred, and then he's all ready. And Alfred goes, he goes, you're not, he's, I know you're not going out there to fail. He's, I know you're not going out there to fail. He goes, I know you're going out there because you want to. Yeah. Yeah. He knows, part. he knows, he, Alfred knew deep down, he goes, there are some people out there, like you said, there are people out there you have to fail, da, 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 and they purposely do it. Mm. But like you said, why don't you just go out and actually... How about purposely go out there and succeed? Don't just, don't just do something and fail and go, oh, well, that was a waste of time. And then, and then become. Oh no! Go, oh yeah, it's part of the process. So I'm going to fail another ten thousand times. No, and they've missed the light bulb moment anyway. And the they is, haven't but, but created it. Then you ask them. So what have you learned? 
Yeah, and they, and they, they, go, they can't tell you anything. They can't tell you anything, yeah. So this is why... So at the end of the day, with quitting on fear, failure is an excuse and doubts, it's quitting on the illusion, guys. It's quitting on the illusion of what these things have created from society, from mentors and people that you look up to and for what this, their stories have told you, which necessarily has brought you into their life and made you try to understand there. But ultimately, it's leaving an everlasting negative effect. Yeah. And here's the problem with... Yeah, just, look, yeah. this is just perspective of art. This is this how is, we look at things this, and say this is what helps us. Yeah. We're not saying that's true because there's no actual... Tr- you know, factual proof about it. Mm. Yes, there's but proof believe, of people but, failing. But you know what succeeding. I do believe. But I know what you. What the thing is, what I do believe. What you just said is that it's just a word. It's just and a we're, word. And we've created a meaning behind it because someone, can you get me angry? No, it's up to you. Well, hang. What in what way are you saying? No, so, but can you get me angry? Yes. No. Because well, then it's I, up to me. Yeah, well, I, like can get you're you're I can get you angry if you're a sort of person that you're of low level consciousness awareness. Yeah, that you that's right. Yeah, low level people, of confidence because, too. Because people react. That's right. But no I'm, one, I can't, look, I can't, you can't disappoint me. Someone I, else yeah. can't disappoint, you know, it, 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 if you take it as disappointment, yes, there's trust and there's yeah. love and connection mm-hmm. with someone mm-hmm. and, and a higher respect for someone. Yeah. But the honest truth is, is that I can't disrespect, you can't disrespect me and I can't disrespect you mm-hmm. unless... The yep. word the, mm. that you have conscious awareness of it and you mm. actually feel it, mm. you know. It, and yeah. well, you, well, you become conscious. The thing is, well, I'm, why I'm bringing up the conscious awareness is because I got I want people to become aware of their own feelings, emotions, thoughts, actions, and results, and all that sort of stuff. Because yeah. when it comes to this, when it comes to when it comes to fear, failure, excuses, doubts, challenges, or obstacles, right? And knowing that it's an illusion, you start having this this second and third person mentality where you start stepping outside of your stuff, start realizing, well, it's just this. Yeah, as Tony Robbins says, just see it as it is, but not worse as it, than it is. You know what well, I'm yeah. saying? And this is why it's vital that you're quitting on something, you're quitting on the meaning, the the society meaning, you're quitting on the illusion that these things give you, mm. right? Which creates the the effect. Remember, the cause is always the fear, and the effect is how you react. Mm. And the problem is with society is that we're not fixing the cause; we're yeah. always trying to fix the effect. And this is a big problem in society. This is what I believe in. Mm. That we should be constantly looking at the main source, not looking at the after effect. Yeah, trying to no, fix no, that. that's right. Yeah, no, absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and moving on to this, and this is basically the final step. And basically, um, what I wanted to, uh, before we get into the final step, is basically you've got to create that mind between abundance and um, you know the uh, the scarcity mentality. You know, you see these people, you see these people who have high level of conscious awareness that they nothing affects them they're in control of their emotions they're in control of everything but they're also in control of their understanding knowledge because they want to be um cu- uh, curious with certain things they yeah, want to know yeah. more things and they take it in, into their own self to know this and also they respond they don't react they take in and they they what did, they, what did you say about they not uh, distort generalize what's the other they one they distort generalize and delete information yeah. so our brain pretty much what happens is because we we're overloaded with information yep They've estimated about 10 million bits of information. It used to be 2 million bits of information now it's gone that up. used to hit the nervous system. Now we're looking at about 10 million bits of information. And, and before we keep going, they they just found out recently, science used to say back then, um, in the early 2000s, that we used to have 60,000 thoughts a day. Now it's actually jumped up to 80,000 thoughts a day. Yeah, because now technology uh, has taken part of our life. Phones, right? Mm. Phones now have, you can have hundreds and hundreds of apps and uh, things to do and Instagram this and photograph that mm. and do this. Uh, marketing has changed. Yep. It used to be, remember, door-to-door, word-of-mouth. Word it B- would have been billboards and all yeah. that. Yeah. Now it's billboards, Facebook, Instagram, uh, door-to-door, uh, cold calling. There's about a thousand things. But in saying that, what happens then, our brain quickly shifts it. Now this is all part of neuro-linguistic neuro, uh, neuro programming, yeah. NLP, NLP, and pretty much... Mm. Two million bits of uh, ten million bits of information gets chunked down. Your brain starts chunking down information because you can't consciously do ten thousand different things. So, and think, think of it like this, guys. So you distort, you generalize it, but what's those? And you delete and information. Delete. Hey, isn't it funny that your mind is quitting on things yeah, that it's no relevant? Story, it's really funny. Hold on, before you go into the story, isn't it funny that your mind is doing these things? So it's distort, generalizing, and what's the other one? The last one. Deleting. Deleting. From- your mind is quitting on things that are not relevant. Do you understand this, guys? Your brain is automatically doing this, but until you become consciously aware at a high level, that's when you start seeing it. You start going, in, so you start getting your eyes internally looking in, and you go, "Wow, 
I'm actually getting rid of things I don't need. And that's you quitting on the illusion. It's quitting on your teachings. Yeah. It's quitting on the low level conscious awareness that you know that you know circumstances are in control of you. You have no choice of the matter, blah, blah, blah. And so you start realizing that you are better deserving of a much healthier, prosperous life. Yeah. You start becoming more aware of it. And yeah. that's something, but this story you can tell me. All right, do you know, okay, this this is what I, okay. So I learned this when I was at uh, getting my coaching uh, uh, coaching qualification, qualification, yeah. All right, mm. and it was a weekend that we were having, um, mm. the institute that I went to put together. Mm. And the speaker there, great speaker, and he said, uh, do you know why people misplace their keys <laughs> and everyone's like no <laughs> obviously not <laughs> like if we knew we'd find our keys mm. now this is only in regards to people that lose their keys yeah. and what he said was mm. in regards to a certain topic we were talking about which was anthony robbins human psychology of the six core needs, needs yes yes it was the need of the uncertainty yes need of, of uncertainty mm-hmm. uh, and, and and so forth and yeah. what he said <laughs> He said, it's because people want to go on an adventure. So you so, talk, uh, hang on. So people misplace their keys because they want to go climb, on an they, they want to climb Kilimanjaro and Mount Fuji just to, and then they realize, fuck, we have misplaced my keys. <laughs> 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 Pretty much, right? And then I took it one step further and I said, that's interesting because when you think about it, when we were kids, we all did Easter egg hunts, mm. right? Or we went to school and we had to try to find something. It's the drama of doing something and trying to find it like a detective because um, I can't remember the two gentlemen, but what they said is they found four personality types within people. Mm. And one of the personality types was the type of the crusader. <laughs> so if you take it into... Now, what they mean is different, but if you take it into context of what we're talking about, mm. you know, people lose their keys yep. on purpose to go mm. on adventure. Mm. So how many times have you done something and forgotten something and go, oh, I should have done this? But what happens? Your brain deleted the information. Yep. Oh, I can't remember that. I have a, I used to have a friend. They'll forget everything. They'll be like, what are you talking about? We did that last week. Mm. You're like, man, I remember what I did when I was eight years old. <laughs> I'm like that though. I'm, I've got that mindset where visually I can picture certain things. And when I tell family members, they go, you, you can remember that? I'm like, of course I can remember that. Yeah, that's that. how I, yeah. Yeah, it was 90% of the time. I'm, I'm very high, especially with it come visually. I'm very, very high, especially when it comes to um, you know, knowing art, very articulate things, details, yeah. because I know I'm quitting on other things that are not relevant yeah. to me. If I took so I, much information, you can channel it. You so can, you can really now, focus the, on now that. the question on this: No, if we quit on the illusions of you know fear, failure, excuse, and doubts, and challenges and obstacles, what happens if we took everything? What happens to our mind? Because they did tell us when we were going through the coaching, uh, you know, institute and colleges. Mm. What happens if we didn't have the store generalize and delete? No, uh, you'll die. And why? Because your brain will overload. So your brain will malfunction. Yeah. It can't handle. Put it this way. Perfect example. If I told you to move your cheek muscle right now, you couldn't do it because you've never, you haven't been taught how to do yeah, that. Yeah. You haven't been, okay, put it this way. You haven't been taught to do this. Now I'm doing this unconsciously. Mm. That's not me doing that. That's on, That's kind of, my brain doing if it. Consciously you start, <laughs> if consciously you started doing this, like, oh, I'm moving If, if I'm going to consciously I'm move do, muscle yeah. 8, 12, 55, B2, 9, yeah, whatever. elbow, I'm going to look like a, a zombie do, mm. doing things. Yeah. Or, you know, the moving. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm. But it, it's true. And, and you do. We overload. And that's why we do overwhelm. Because what happens is our brain then can't distort the information. And then what happens is someone's asking you questions like, oh, you know, where were you? Blah, 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 blah. Like say a police man. Because like, oh, yeah. your brain's going, uh, trying to recollect. All right, sort, chunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, oh, that's the information. Like the other day I had to call the police on something and the person's like, oh, can you describe the person to me? Just briefly. I went, they're wearing this, 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 this. And they're like, wait one sec. Yeah. And you so can hear the, and the police officer over the thing going, yeah. wait, hold on. Wait, what was that? How did you see that? Uh, like, okay, you, all right, cool. Yeah. So this, so the point is that overall, this on this topic is basically knowing that from the illusion that uh, we've been taught, we've uh, been upbringing from it. Our mind has been. We have infinite intelligence with our conscious mind and our unconscious yeah. mind. We have the ability to distort, generalize, and delete. Right. Our mind yeah. is doing the work for us. Right. It knows what is important to us. It knows what's not important to us. What I'm saying to you guys when it comes to these things is to basically start quitting on the illusion that these things will take over your life and start being in control 
That's of correct. these is by responding, not reacting. Responding yeah. from a way of trying to understand, like, why is this happening? Well, put it you this know, way. Well, how sports, can I change it? Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. A team loses whatever. Mm. Mm. What happens? The next time, they respond. Yeah. They don't react to it. They respond and to the, the challenge. And, and they come out firing the next game. Gordon Ramsay is... Why Gordon Ramsay is so successful? He goes, I don't look at the positives. I look, always look at the negatives. The guy is so articulate with certain things. He goes, if one he's little very negative... He's meticulous. He's a meticulous person. He will know. If someone is very negative, or he know that he'll distort... He will basically general, distort, generalize, and delete. Right? Or generalize... Sorry, I know I mixed it up. Sorry. But what he's doing, he's, he's quitting on things that are not serving, but he's focusing on things that are of serving on him. And he's taking control of that. So I'm saying to you guys, he's take control of these things. If you're fearful of something, take control of it. You know that it's just there to help you. If you failed, if you failed something or... So we're learning. It's there to help you. Excuses, it's there to help you. Doubts, it's there to help you. Challenges, obstacles, it's there to help you. Quit on these things, letting, you, uh, letting them take over your life and be a person of high conscious awareness yeah and take that front uh that you know your front foot uh first and this brings us to the last one which basically is quit on who you are not and this is something that i wanted to talk to you about and especially you know knowing that uh we do speak generally you know we have a conversation about these uh, you know a lot and this is why we've taken notes especially the mask and insecurities of this topic quit on who you are not the mask that, yeah. I, that I think you did, you, know, you spoke to me weeks ago about this. Because I do believe that a lot of people walk around with masks on. Yeah, people don't walk around with their, their true face. No. Yeah. And the thing is, because this leads to a level of insecurity. Oh, yeah, a deep so, level. Yeah, very deep. So why, do we, so why do you feel that quitting on who you are not is vital, especially quitting on the mask and insecurities? What will this do for us? So uh, this idea that you know, we, we know about and we've spoken about is because people are hiding. They've either mm. created, you know, it's like when people say bring down the walls, you know, but the mask is something that they don't take off. Mm. See, with walls, you can put them up in certain situations. And mm. sometimes, like we were saying about the ego, protect you and serve you. And yep. sometimes you need your ego to protect you in certain situations. And like, and it's also the, you know how they say, don't burn your bridges. Yeah. I'm very. I'll burn my bridges. I don't, I don't care who the person is or whatever. That's me. Yeah. But there are times that um, sometimes you need to mend those bridges. Yeah. You, you, know, you know, building walls, mending bridges. But when it comes to the mask, you know, with insecurities, how does this lead onto this? Yeah. You know, is, so, it, is it back? Is a mask leading to security, or is the insecurities lead into the mask? Nah, so the insecurities become the mask. So you, we pretty mm. much what happens is you can imagine. Mm. Um, <clears throat> years of pain. Yep. Uh, but it, not just pain, also um, nurture and love. If we have, if we didn't, if we were a kid that was too needy, mm. you know, I was always told the difference between two different selfishness, selfish and selfish, which mm. is the person that's selfish in will look after their own and understand when to do things for themselves and put themselves first, and then mm. there's the other one of the person that comes from a needy place. And right. same as what I was before. It's like yeah. the good and the bad. The good, the good is and bad. your first, and then the next time is too, you're thinking of yourself too much. Yeah, you're thinking of yourself too much. Yeah. Or what it is, is that you're mm. doing things in spite of others, mm. right? And it will negatively affect someone else. So sleeping with another man's wife, of or course. whatever it is, yeah, right? Yeah, whatever the situation is, mm. right? Mm. Now, these masks, mm. we create different masks for different roles. Mm. Relationship, of course, health, of course, work, of course. Yes. right? Do you know how many people in the corporate world we know? Oh. As soon as they become a manager, they think that they're, they're everything. The mask. Then they come to someone with high intelligence, and you know what the funny thing is? They kind of bow down a little bit mm. to that person. Or they try to step their role and mm -hmm. say, "This is what I do." So yep. No one really cares. Yeah. Right. But the the truth is, is ladies and gentlemen, we the mask that we I've had to take off certain masks and mm -hmm. go on. This is just not me. This is my insecurity. Mm -hmm. This is my past, mm -hmm. my pain. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, put it back on. Mm. You know, uh, whether that be, you know, being cheated on or cheating on someone, you know, mm. in spite of that person. Sometimes yep. we project. Mm -hmm. I was watching this in Suits the other day. Yep. Um, we project mm. our negative experiences on people. Mm. 
thinking that that person is that person. So, so you think so you think the mask is doing that? The mask is projecting that. Of course, that's the mask that we look. It is you have to take responsibility, and people don't. That's why I was saying it before, and I think it was on quitting of the ego or the first step mm. that we're talking about. Mm. But I think it was the third one. But when you take full responsibility of your mm. actions and your non-actions, then and only then will the mask come off. Mm. Right. So in saying that, it's like you know wearing your heart on your sleeve and just yep. being vulnerable and yep. being abundant that's it and in order to do that yeah you need to let go of that mask you just yeah. have to. and i think also with the mask right this is what i was gonna you know and this to sum all this up especially quitting on who you are not if you've got to come from a space of your heart not your yeah, head you have to come sure, from your heart space sure your head is very important when it comes to the conscious and the unconscious how mm-hmm. it's been you know they work the objective and the subjective mind however when it comes to taking off the mask and actually letting the insecurities go, this is where the heart space comes from because you only know yourself. You know who you truly are, right? And even before, you know, when it comes to, you know, from what society has deemed quitting and what, you know, in the spiritual world or mind, body and soul, what they consider yeah. quitting. What I find, you know, this is what, they, this is what this lady said here. Um, she goes about, you know, it doesn't matter what others think. And this is the thing that I do find that the reason we have masks is because we are very afraid of what people might say. It's the judgment. But isn't it funny that we judge other people yet we don't like when other people judge us? Yes. Yeah. And this is fun that, you know, they always say that, you know, what you do unto others will be done unto you. Of course. And like karma, it's, it's the law, laws law of the of universe. The law of karma will do that. And the fact is that it's also that it's the law of the like attracts a like. And this is the why that when you quit on certain things and you quit on who you are not, you're quitting on that space. You know, um, Quitting, you know, isn't always the best option, but sometimes it's something that you shouldn't be rushing into, right? Um, it doesn't have any disappointment, but I find that, you know, um, you know, there's the times that I've quit certain masks and insecurities, and I find that it was very hard because I've held onto it for so long, but then I've realized that it's no longer serving me. And what else is there? What else, if you're going to allow this mask to, to keep going, it's going to serve you in a very negative road. And if basically, if you sum up the difference of what's going to serve you with what's yeah. not going to serve you, you know you're always going to go with what's going to serve you. And the way you have to do it is take it off. It will take time to do it. But like I said, come from a heart space, not the Well, head. that too. But sometimes we, we do things mm. because we think it serves us. We mm. think we're doing it, but then we realize we're doing it because we want the acceptance of others, the love of others. That's what well, that's the belongingness of being part of a group or yeah. a thing that means more. It's like, mm. you know, I'm just saying, you know, like why everybody watches one TV show. Mm. It's because it's like everybody's doing it. So I want to be part of what everyone else is doing. That's, that's why right. I, I just started watching Game of Thrones. Mm. I watched a bit of season one, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Started watching season eight, yep. no offense, whatever. Yep. You know, I'd rather watch Suits. Mm. you know but for me like Supernatural I always get digs at mm. why you like Supernatural Jasmine got me onto it yep. I'm like this is perfect this is everything I believe in you know the demons and vampires yeah. and werewolves and it's cool it's like yeah alright cool but everybody just went this is a good show mm. society said it's a good show everybody do it mm. everybody go watch it mm. you know um, is it a great show yes for, for the writers and, and whatnot. but what I'm saying is is that sometimes we do things Perfect example, everyone wants to become a teacher. Mm. They don't want to be a teacher. All they want to do is because, oh, I'm, I want to be, yeah, I'm, I'm studying. So you ask them, what are you doing? I'm studying to be a teacher. Oh, how come? Well, you get four weeks annual every year and plus another two and six. Th- that has, that is got nothing to do with teaching, mm. right? Uh, my friends are doing this course, so I went and do it. Yeah, to, uh, I went to, to do it. My friends are doing this job, so uh, I went to do that job. job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're following the sheep. Mm. And what you don't realize is the sheep always lead to the lion or the wolf mm. or, the slaughter, or the slaughter line or the slaughter line and this is something that this is why you know people even I'm saying when you quit you're not necessarily quitting it's you're simply redirecting your course but you're keeping the eye on, on your own destination not anyone else's yeah that's true right? that's true and this is why that with what we're doing right sure there are a lot of coaches out there right and we yeah, admit there is. there is thousands yeah. right in Australia and overseas mm. This is why that we're doing this for you guys, for our audience, for you guys, because you know the ones that have supported us for all this time, right? And we've been together since two thousand and sixteen. This is yeah, this is almost coming up to a full two years, yeah, right. Oh, right. And you know, it, it, we have made the decision 
and we have redirected ourselves to go onto this journey, right, and to stick to the course of what we've done. How many times did we redirect the business? We, we've re- redirected it many times. How many times, times did we revamped because it? And we, then until we found what we really wanted to do. And, and this is something that now it's taken off. And this is something that I wanted to finish up on, is basically go through this, you know, understand the difference between quitting and quitting from a society perspective, and also from a body, mind, body, and soul perspective. Beautiful. Quit yeah. on the ego. Yeah, right. Right? And basically from there, quit on the ego. Quit on, like you said, to the viewers, basically the one that serves you, the one yeah, that protects you. Yeah, quit on the ego that that yeah that serves you. Uh, quit on the one that you think is pr- is protecting you, but it's actually hurting you. Yep. And start living through. And, and I know some people are going to disagree with this, but live through the ego that's powerful. Hmm. That is. And I will be frank with this, and I will say it straight: if someone's you know coming at hmm. you, hmm. you need ego. If you don't, believe, oh no, this person's not going to hurt me. Hmm. Hmm. You're going to get knocked out, man. Hmm. Right, you need to stand up for yourself, and that comes from. <laughs> you got to tie it up. I'm not tied it up. Uh, put my buttons around. <laughs> right, but you, sorry, guys, but you need to come from a place of uh, of that ego, and especially yeah. when you're starting something like a business or whatever it is. You know, you're going on your first date. If you come from a place of scarcity, like you were saying, and not from a place of abundance, that person's going to see the mask that you're putting on. Yeah, and this is why this is why you know don't be like I said with the ego. Like basically, you've got to understand that the ego is here to serve you as well in a good yeah. way. But but know what is good and what's not, right? And this goes through to the next phase. Like I said, to finish up on quitting yeah. on the fear and failures and excuses. These were all illusions, guys. Right? Understand that we basically we generalize to store and we basically to store, generalize, and delete. And the mind is doing that for us. So do it do it for the right, the goodness of your mind. Delete yeah. certain things. Quit certain things of illusions that these things are teaching us. Quit on the illusions that fear and failure and excuses, doubts, and challenges and obstacles are teaching us. And basically, like you're saying about before, you know, with business dates and all that sort of stuff. When you quit on that certain part of the ego that is not serving you, you're quitting on something that is not you. And this is why at last phase. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're absolutely right. You know, um, quitting on who you are not. Yeah, yeah. because if you know you Good get the point, ego, right? if you know you got the ego that is Good not point. serving you, not helping you, then you're necessarily quitting on something that's not you necessarily. That's right. Yeah. And then people will start seeing your true colors, right? And you'll and, see your true color, but true colors will always show. You see in tough times, you know, you put people in certain situations and they true panic colors. Oh, yeah. True colors oh, yeah. really show because oh, yeah. what they don't realize is the mask turns on. Yeah, it's like a little flick, you know. And it's like, hmm. I don't like this person. <laughs> this person told me they're the best salesperson in the world. Hmm. Yeah, three hundred people just walked past, didn't sell a thing. Yeah. Or even if they are certainly making the money, but they say they're an authentic person, we see some of the things they do dodgy. It's like, well, where, where's this coming from? That's right. But anyway, guys, that is it for today's episode. Basically, like I said, quit while you're ahead. Why is quitting a great thing? And look, I would like to thank you guys for watching us so much. Really do appreciate Legends. it. Right? Legends. 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 So again, like us, guys. Subscribe to us. You know, Leave a comment down uh, below. Make right? sure to share. Make sure to share. All right. And until next time, thank you so much. Peace. Peace.